Hey, what is up guys? This video will consist of a few questions that I've been asked over the years by you, the people, and from the, cu the customers that called in over the years. Uh, one of the first questions that I've been asked a lot is about the network ports. Which ports do you have to open up for your firewall or your router? Those ports are port 5060 and the port range of 10,000 through 20,000. I know it sounds like a very large range, but it's very important. Port 5060 or port 5060 uses the SIP signaling where the 10,000 through 20,000 range is used for the voice traffic. Both of these protocols are UDP, UDP. Uh, so there's no TCP. You do have, if you do prefer TCP, you have to let us know so we can set your account up for that. But all of the, our traffic, silk signaling, all of our voice will be coming over ports UDP and the port range of port 5060 and ports 10,000 through 20,000. The next question that I get asked a lot is what happens if you have one way or no way audio? Most likely, is that your server is not set with the right IP address scheme so that your provider, your SIP provider, can actually send traffic back. Or in a typical PBX in a flash install, uh, you don't really regularly set the IP address on the WAN side because we haven't really discussed that yet in this case. And most providers would need to see your WAN IP or your outbound IP address so that we can send the traffic back accordingly. Quick way of doing that, when you go into the PBX NA Flash platform, you go into the web browser, you go into tools, you go into an asterisk SIP settings. There's a settings here that you can see on this page in front of me. You can actually modify uh, the IP address going out. So let's say you have Comcast for an example, and your IP address is 12.12.1.1. So you put it here, 12.12.1.1, and your local network. So my local network, where this IP address for this device is 10.0.1.83. That's just how my network scheme internally works. So for this page here, you end up putting the 10.0.1.1 network. Up, oh, sorry. That zero, excuse me. That zero network. So anything between this asterisk box and your extension is going out will be masked into the proper IP address so that the carrier can actually process the voice calls correctly. Another question that I get hit a lot on is voice latency. Voice latency. Uh, by definition the calls the call voice traffic takes a while it may be a few seconds behind you might hear a lot of jitter in the calls and few things that you might want to check into because it could be between it could be as small as the soft phone on your PC all the way up to the carrier and they might have to do a few site surveys they might have to go out to your 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 location do some testing but let's start with the basics hopefully the basics will keep you from having much more issues later the first thing you got to make sure that the devices that you're using has enough RAM, has enough memory to process the calls. Keep in mind now, voice traffic based on data is very fast. You get thousands of RTP packets within minutes of a call. So you got to have a device that knows how to take all of that traffic and wrap it up together to display you the voice part of, of the call. If not, if the call comes late, or if the packets are not, or the packets not at processed fast enough, you're going to have issues like latency on the call coming from either the cell phone or the PC. So you might want to make sure that the PC is a fairly newer PC, a fairly up-to-date PC if you're using your cell phone. Now for your server, make sure your server is a fairly newer server itself, running on older software or older, or older machine machineware might be your culprit for the latency part especially if you can confirm that you have the amount of bandwidth correct from your provider and you've ran through a few things like speedtest.net or pingtest.net and everything seems to be fine the first thing I would think of is that the server itself might have issues processing calls 
Now, if you haven't heard of speed tests and ping tests, uh, the websites are www.speedtest.net and www.pingtest.net. Both of those sites will give you a lot of information of how you, of your network status and your network health. Most more preferably your internet health and internet status. So if you have any issues based on those websites, you might want to get in contact with your provider to do some troubleshooting just to make sure that your speed is up to par for any type of voice traffic. The next question is how to change your caller ID. Now I get this one a lot because of course if you want to make an outbound call, you want to send the call that you want them to call back on, or you want to send the caller ID so that when they want to contact you again, they know what number to call you from. There's many ways you can actually make this change, unfortunately. Uh, you can actually go to each of the extension if you want to. You also click on the outbound routes to set them up. You can also click on the trunk. Yes, the trunk actually do have caller ID capabilities. The idea for the trunk is that it is a catch-all. So if anything else fails or you have many different extensions, you're not sure which one should be calling out with the right caller ID, you stick it on the trunk so all of your calls coming out of this server will have the same caller ID. Or if you want just certain locations or certain extensions or certain ways of calling, you actually modify all of this inside of the PBX. One method, when you click on the outbound routes, and click on the route of your choice, you can modify the extension here. And from here, you can type in, for an example, uh, let's say your ABC Bank. That will be the caller ID name, and the number would be 1-800-888-555-1212. Now, inside of the caller ID name, you have to put... The, the the quotations and with the number you put greater than and less than so when you send the traffic out from your device it will look at the name field correctly and the color ID number field correctly now this little toggle on the side here says override extensions the reason why that is checked because you can actually send color ID on the extensions themselves which is the same setup here so each extension can have their own way of calling out with their color ID uh, that could be a little dangerous in some cases, but if you do trust your employees at your company and you want them to display the proper name going out, you can do that on the extensions. Now, also you can do the exact same thing here, this exact same role under the trunks. And of course, the outbound routes will take precedence over the trunk, but let's say you did not have any caller ID here. If you have it set inside of the trunk, the trunk caller ID will go out as accordingly. Next thing you do is on your inbound routes, your outbound routes, and also the extensions. Now another issue, a little bit touchy for me, um, is codecs. Now codecs is very touchy depending on the carrier. Some carriers require certain codecs, some, uh, some carriers will actually specify which codecs that they need for you to send. But you have to be mindful that if you do not send the Kodak as they require, you're liable to have many issues getting calls out from your device. So I would definitely take note, whatever the provider tells you which Kodak that they want you to send, be sure to send that Kodak at all times. If not, you're liable to not have some of your calls to not go through. Two ways, actually three ways you can do this, but I'm going to show you two major ways. That's inside the actual trunk. Let's say you go to your provider and they say, well, we require you to send G729 calls. Let's say you do have the paid license for G729. In case you did not know, G729 is a Kodak compression that you pay loyalty fees, or, I'm sorry, royalty fees, roughly 10 bucks per line so that you can use the compression Kodak. It might seem a little pricey, but you have to be mindful. In theory, a typical... Uh, a law a PCMU call, a typical telephone call, will be roughly 63 kilobits per second, whereas a G729 call is eight, only a fraction of that. So you can have many more calls based at, based on the amount of bandwidth that you have without upgrading your bandwidth. So and also is a one-time charge. So over the over the long run, 
it is very it's very valuable and I think it's worth buying. But let's say the carrier wants you to send only G729. Only. No other code at, no other code at negotiating. Just G729. Quick way. The command is disallow equals all and allow G729. Now what that string does is say allow disallow everything else. Do not allow nothing else but only allow G729. And you have to do this in this order. If you flip this order in any way, it will do the opposite. It will say allow G729, then say don't allow anything. So therefore, you will not have any codecs. Therefore, the call will just sit there. So definitely put that in this order. Put this in the ingoing and outgoing settings. It depends on what you use for your incoming and outgoing provider. One more place you need to make this change is that to make sure that the entire box can at least allow G729 into the server. This is at the asterisk SIP settings module. In this module, this is the same module that we just modified the, the, I, the IP address in. In this module, they have many codecs here that you can automatically allow. In this case, G729 is not allowed on this codec, so we're going to click yes on that. That's very important because if you do want the call to at least get into your server, and you want certain devices to send out G729 or certain devices to send out different codecs. You have to enable these codecs first until then citywide, the so I don't say citywide, the uh, the server-wide settings first, so that all the calls will come in. Now, one last question for today will be faxing. This is another touchy subject for me because I've actually been able to see uh, how faxing got evolved over the years. Because a few years ago, faxing via VoIP was not reliable, in my opinion, it was not very reliable. And over the years, it made it more and more reliable to use. Even people with uh, their business uh, riding on making fax calls, they're using those now. But you're going to have to do two things in this box to allow a uh, faxing. You can allow a fax machine to process the fax calls, which that would be ideal. They just send the call in. You set the route to the extension. The extension will go to like an ATA device to the fax machine. When they call the number, here's the fax. You're all good. But let's say you want the server itself to actually do something with the fax. Let's say uh, you want the, the fax to come in cleaner. It will rewrite the packets. It will mod it will clean up the packets a little bit and reset into the fax machine. Or if you don't have a fax machine, you can tell the box to send. You tell the server to actually send the fax to an email. Yes, folks, you can actually tell the asterisk server to send a fax to email, which is a fax to email module for that. Now, for that, you have to download the fax configuration module inside the module admin here. And it should be this line here. Now, they might have updated a few of these. There might be a few more fax to email modules that you might have to look into. But be sure to click on the repositories here. Be sure to click on the basic, extend, com unsupported, and commercial. You might not want to see the unsupported ones. But if you're an advanced user, you want a few more modules that you think you might be might be very useful for you. Click on the unsupported uh, option as well. Commercial. There are a few modules in there that are paid, but be sure to click that module and look at the new list there to see if anything that you're interested in with, interested in, excuse me, you can download that or purchase it from their website. Now once you got the fax module installed, you can actually configure the fax module so that when the fax come in, it can go to any email address that you want, any fully qualified email address in this case. You can also tell it to send it to any other destination. Or you tell it to hold the fax. Now keep that in mind. Once you enable this, you got to tell the server to not just pass the fax on to the next extension. You want it to actually handle the fax alone. You go back to the asterisk SIP settings tab and tick this option right here. T38 pass through equals yes or no. If you set it to yes, once it gets the fax, uh, the, the fax call, it will send it directly to the fax phone number or fax extension that you might have set up without really de uh, uh, detecting it or looking into the actual fax tones. So it's going to be completely uh, ignorant of the fax tones and will not modify at all. Clicking on no, 
means they will take the fact songs, listen to them, and process the facts as the server hears it. So it would not actually go to the fax machine. It would go to the server, and the server will process the calls for you. Now, of course, uh, there's one more option. Is It really depends on the carrier over this option, but setting inbound uh, caller ID name. Unfortunately, this is an option that's based on your carrier. Some carriers will allow some carriers will send caller ID name on the calls and some of them will not. You would definitely have to get with your provider just to make sure can they do caller ID name in for inbound. And if they do, they will automatically send this to you. There's also a little bit of a workaround. It's not very promising, but it does work in some cases. You go back to the module admin. Let's see, it might have it already enabled here. Ah, there it is. On the newer builds of Free PBX, they automatically enable caller ID super effective. Ideal is that, is that it looks, it does a caller ID lookup on every call coming in. It checks the yellow pages, white pages, roughly. You have a whole list of different lookups that it actually pulls up. So one day when you're, I guess when you're bored or you really want to look into this feature, there's a module in here that's called Caller ID Super Effective. Look through that module. You might find some interesting facts in there. Uh, now to enable that, very quickly, very simple. When you go to any inbound caller ID routing that you might already have set up, you're going to turn it on here. Caller ID lookup source. Source will be caller ID super effective. Now you can do many different sources via the asterisk phone book or another standalone database that you might have installed. It depends up to it depends up to your discretion in, in this case, but we're sending this to caller ID super effective so when the call comes in, it will automatically look for the number on certain databases it would display the name and number that what it sees onto the inbound call so you have caller ID now this these update this databases does not update very well so it might be a little old might be incorrect so I would definitely prefer you walk working with your provider to see can actually process inbound caller ID name so all the calls that come in will have a name Okay, guys, that was it for this video here. Uh, we do have a few more. Uh, we do have a, a few more questions and answer videos coming up. This is just a quick one for you, just to get some of the generic issues out of the way. So you want to set up the call, and let's say you set up the 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 uh, PBX tonight, and you run into these little issues. Hopefully, this video will get you through that day until you find more issues or you find more questions that you want us to review. Of course, guys, look, uh, take this video and look through the video, save it if you want to, uh, keep it in your history, because this video can be very valuable for you to fix little small issues. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to our videos. Be sure to ask us any questions inside of the comments. Be sure to look through our description boxes, because there will be a few goodies there, uh, especially with, with a lot of links and a lot of few note, a uh, little few notes that I might have put down in the video. Uh, I think we will have them inside the description box as well. Okay guys, this was it for my video. Hope you guys have a good night.